We live in a time where there's effectively a complete lack of consensus about the place of consciousness in the natural world. It's possible to find people arguing that only consciousness exists and the reality is something like a dream, that consciousness is primary and brings matter into existence, that matter and consciousness are just two sides of the same thing and so came to existence at the same time, that consciousness emerges at some point during evolution with complex enough brains, and it's also possible to find people arguing that consciousness is something like an illusion, that only the material world exists and that we're kind of fundamentally confused about what's going on with consciousness. Now, this position is called illusionism, and it's kind of comes out of a scientific tradition. You know, science, the tools of science are used to study the material objective world primarily. And so it's science is based in this kind of physicalist or philosophical materialist view of the world where matter is primary and you could say many scientists believe that only matter exists. Now, you can see why if that's your view of the world, you would be it would be worth exploring the idea that maybe consciousness isn't quite what we what it seems to be, especially since all of our laws of how the world operates, all the causal power is in the material. And all this phenomenal non-material consciousness stuff that seems to be around doesn't seem to be pulling the levers in the brain or, you know, changing stuff in reality. So perhaps it's really not part of the picture of the world that we need to be building up. So one of the kind of landmark books that, that kind of explored illusionism yeah, comes from Daniel Dennett and it's called Consciousness Explained, which I think is a kind of uh, intentionally provocative you know, book title. Um, and so Dennett starts with Descartes' idea that perception, conscious perception, operates by there being what's come to be known as a Cartesian theatre inside the head. And so when you see the light falls in the retina and there's some self, some soul inside the head that views the image and that's how perception works. The self views views the, uh, the sense data. Now, this view is not really held by anyone because you get this infinite regress where you could ask, well, what is it inside the self that allows it to see? And then there has to be some self inside its head and it just goes on forever. So Descartes puts forward this idea and says, this is a view of how consciousness works. And another way of, of, of kind of saying the same thing is that to have subjectivity, there has to be a subject. There has to be some self inside that's viewing the contents of consciousness. Now, having put this view of consciousness forward, or having outlined this view that already existed, Dennett proceeds to describe how processes like vision and hearing, how they operate through parallel processes of, you know, rich information processing in the brain, in neural circuits, and how you can describe in third person objective terms, all the things we need to know about how perception works without ever invoking consciousness. You can look at the brain, you can talk about the circuits in the retina, how it maps onto all the different you know, processes in the brain and ultimately onto your muscles to create behavior. And at no point is there a self. At no point is, does it all come together into a unified you know, uh, experience by an ex that's being had by an experiencer. And so this is kind of largely his argument as to why Consciousness has to be an illusion because there's no self in the brain. There's no place where it all comes together. Now, this book attracted a lot of criticism, mainly because it was seen that that's a kind of a straw man, you know, uh, view of what consciousness is. Very few people hold the view that consciousness has to be, has to operate in this kind of Cartesian way. Um, and to me, the the idea that the subject, there has to be a subject viewing the contents of consciousness, that's just not true. And the most fascinating thing about consciousness is the fact that the self, the subject, is an illusion. It's not really there. So there are two, two proposals here about the illusions. You know, the illusionist thing, the consciousness is an illusion, the fact of experience, the redness of red. Um, I think the self is an illusion, but there's a lot more to be said, said on that. But so, it's been argued that actually, you know, in a lot of reviews of the book, it was kind of jokingly referred to as consciousness ignored instead of consciousness explained, because then it doesn't really touch on what it is 
what this actual kind of stuff of consciousness is, the stuff of experience. Um, it just kind of gets ignored in this picture of the brain spoken about from an objective viewpoint. And so another way of kind of talking about his argument is we can just do neuroscience. We can just be committed to viewing the brain objectively and we just don't have to bother thinking about the consciousness stuff. Um, now, a lot of people who work on consciousness were understandably irritated by the idea that you could just ignore consciousness and it's not really there. Uh, a lot of people find it a kind of find it incredible to believe that someone could argue that consciousness isn't real in some sense because it seems to be the most the, the one thing that we can't doubt its existence you know it's it's the it's how we come to know anything is through consciousness now the fact that it seems perhaps kind of impossible to believe that consciousness is an illusion for me that prompts me to think that perhaps I haven't fully understood the subtleties of the arguments. Um, because presumably, you know, people who hold this position also see the redness of red. And they're not just claiming they don't see the redness of red. They're claiming something subtle about what could be going on, could be going on here. And in my opinion, the best proponent of this position, the person who's most clearly arguing for at the moment is a philosopher called Keith Frankish who recently had an article, which I'll link to in the description, and is very active on Twitter and kind of puts out lots of thoughtful uh, questions and ideas in, the, in this area. So I recommend following him there. Um, and if I'm honest, I still find it hard to conceptualize what it would even, what it could mean for consciousness to be an illusion. Um, and it could be the case that these subtle versions of illusionism might end up aligning with with what turns out to be true and it might turn out that we just kind of different people disagree on what it means for something to be an illusion you know consciousness could exist in some sense but just not in a way that allows it to it doesn't exist as a separate substance but it exists as a as a property say of, of reality so i think this is actually going to be a fruitful avenue to explore as we come to terms with trying to understand the nature of consciousness and how it fits into the natural world. But for now, you can pretty much take your pick of any <laughs> position you want on consciousness because you have the whole spectrum to choose from.